So it's 130. This is the tension docket for the 323rd. So to explain things, the law says when a child's brought to our detention facility, you must see a judge within the two first business days. And the judge has to decide whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you in custody, I have a couple of things I want to go over. First of all, you have a right to remain silent in today's hearing. However, if you give up that right and say anything, nothing you say at a detention hearing can be used against you at any other type of court setting. Also, I'll let you know you do have a right to an attorney, and if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you throughout this whole process. Now, at this hearing, what happens is the I will get a report that's written down basically based off the police report that came with you when you were admitted to our detention facility. Based on that report, I need to find that there's probable cause and offense that have been committed. <clears throat> What probable cause means is, can somebody articulate, can somebody put into words a series of statements that, if they were true, would be a violation of their laws? All right, this is hearsay. This is not evidence. This is not your final trial today. This is not whether or not you committed an offense. This is simply about deciding whether I should detain you or to release you back into the community. Now, that decision is made after there's probable cause. I'll consider various factors. I'll consider things like if you are a danger to yourself, if you are a danger to others, if you're likely not to appear for court, if you've previously been adjudicated for a felony, among other things. Now, once I make this decision, as I told you, uh, if you are detained, you will see a judge every 10 days while you're here. If you are released, I can release you on any kind of reasonable condition. That includes electronic monitoring, random drug testing, um, orders on where you can live, orders on where you cannot live, who you can associate with, 
what rules you have to follow. And those are the conditions of your release. If you do not follow those conditions, then we'll simply issue a warrant and bring you back here. Now, there will be information that you have that I do not have. This always happens, and that's okay. That's the law. So if you do have information that's useful for your case, this is not the time to blurt it out. That is something that you want to convey to your attorney so that they can decide when the best time to use that is. And this is also directed at the parents. I am certain there is information about your child that I will not have today. That's, that's just the way the system works. This is not the trial. This is not about what finally happens to your child. This is simply about detaining them or releasing them. If you do have information that is pertinent and useful, then I would tell that to your child's attorney so they can decide how to use this. Oh, finally, I do see some people wearing masks. That's fine. If you want to wear a mask, that's okay. If you want to take it off, that's okay too. No one's going to give you a hard time either way. All right, so let's go ahead and start with Destiny. Okay, so Destiny, you've been here for 30 days. You were brought in in November for something that happened in August. I believe you were with a group of teenagers. Elderly victim walked behind you. The group started yelling at the victim. And he was trying to respond, but because of his age and medical condition, he could not communicate. So you had been to push him down the street and ran away when you saw he was not getting up. He was transported to the hospital with a brain bleed. Your separate court on July 16th. Okay, you are level one outstanding. You have been for almost a month now. The victim was hospitalized almost all of August, and now he is having difficulty speaking and seizures. Stephanie, are there any notes from here? <laughs> Do we have a parent here for Dustin? Destiny, I had released her before, is that correct? Your Honor, um, we had a detention hearing on the 25th of May, um, just because she was leaving her home without permission and having other issues. Um, and so, Judge Terry elected to hold her at that time. Okay. The last detention hearing we had here, um, you, you had questions about whether, why she was living with the aunt instead of the mom all this time. And the mom was trying to explain and he, he decided to hold her at that time. Okay. The mom does want to have her home. I remember that. So mom, you want her in your home? Yes, sir. Okay, so has she been living with you all this time? Before. Before when? Um, last year and earlier this year. The reason why she went back to my sister, that she loves her, like she don't have no children. And so, Patsy, we released Destiny to her mom or to the aunt? To me. In the beginning, it was to the aunt. Okay. Um, she lived on and off with mom and aunt. Like, did she have permission? So, I'm trying to figure this out. So, when this is, offense happened, allegedly, mm -hmm. she was living with her mom or with the aunt? She was with my sister. In August of last year, she was with your sister. Yes, sir. And she came here in November. In November, when she was brought here, was she living with you or with your sister? Yeah, when we took her home, she was with no, me. No, in November, when she was brought here, was she living with you or with your sister? With my sister. Okay. So when she was released from here, she what, was when released, was she released, Patsy? She was released to me. 12-7. 12-7. 
Okay, so when we released her, who did we release her to? Like who signed her up? Her aunt signed her out. Okay. And so she was living with her aunt this whole time until when was she brought in front of Judge Terry? May 25th. Okay, so for the five, six months, she was living with her aunt. But she, was she violating her EM conditions? No. Okay. What was what was the reason Judge Terry decided to hold her? Do you know? Because she had been sticking out of the house. Her aunt. Okay, so she wasn't on EM. She just was violating the rules. Uh, she had been taken off of the EM testing. Okay. Do we know where she was sneaking out to? Mom, where was she sneaking out to? To a friend. The same friends that she got arrested with here? No, sir. Okay. So what kind of friends have a 15-year-old girl coming over, 14-year-old girl coming over in the night? She sneak out of my sister's house and go to her friend's house. And when I find out about it, I went over there and got her. Yeah, but what kind of people allow a 14 year old girl to come over to their house in the middle of the night they feel like you see that she's a good guy uh, really respectful they don't have no problem with it okay mom you see my problem these the parents of the friends how can they think she's a good child if she's showing up in the middle of the night at their house right was this passion was this like an every night thing yeah so she was on the truck march before. She was. And she, she was successful. She was successful. So mom, what is the plan now about to release Destiny? Will she be living with you or with Aunt? With me. Okay. I'm the other taker and she's gonna be staying with me from now on. So Destiny, my problem is, is that clearly you weren't being supervised when this allegedly happened, this injury case to the elderly person. And then now you're not accepting supervision by sneaking out of the house. And if you're not going to follow the rules and be supervised, then I've got bigger issues. I'm, I do not want to put you in a situation where you can go back and commit another offense. Ms. Paxton, were the other teenagers arrested as well? Yes, I believe so, Your Honor. They all have pending cases? I believe so. I'm not positive. Okay. All right. Well, Destiny, your loved one outstanding, you have been for almost a month now. I'm going to go ahead and give you another shot at this. I got released an electronic monitor, but you have to understand. But when we have our rules, we have our rules. Mom, what's the name of the friend that she was sneaking out to? I really don't know her name. Okay. I did I'm, I wasn't trying to know her. I just took her home and I told her I'd never go back over there to that friend. So you knew where the address was? How did you know where they lived? Um, somebody told me I have reached out to so many people that knows us and know Destiny. And then someone told me where she was at. She was at a girl's house. So you didn't knock on the door and say, why are you, why is my kid here? I did. I asked for the girl's mother and I asked the mother, how can you allow a 14 year old in your home without concern? What did she say? The mother said, well, she looked like a, a really good child. I heard that my daughter go to school with her, and she's a good student at school. And so you never caught her name? No. Okay, I'm I, 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 wasn't, I, I was just more angry. Sir, and, I was assuming your boyfriend or? Yes, yeah, my fiance. Fiance, yeah, OK. So do you know the name of these people? No, I do not. But we did get we did get the police in, involved because we think it was kind of a bad area. So the police 
did you know get involved on this and they was trying to help find you know, find her also. So we were comfortable with taking her home because they were there, that's where the trouble began. So by her being at our place. What do you mean that's where the trouble began? When she was over her aunt house, that's when this all this situation occurred. So we you know with us, we feel like she'll be better over there. And they don't know where we live at the friends and stuff. And I'm not gonna allow them to you know to come over there and pick her up and go out to stay off of the off of the monitor on the monitor. I'm not gonna allow it. So nobody knows the name of these people that she was staying. How long was she staying there? Uh less than a week, like four days. So your daughter is with some strangers for four days, and then when you actually meet them, you never ask them their name? To me, she called my sister and let her know where she was at. She goes by my sister's house. But to me, it, I was worried about it. I, she's not, I, I feel like she's not allowed to be out there. She's supposed to be at home. Like, how long was she gone through her aunt's house before you found out she was gone? Um, a day. And after a day, she really did call my sister to let her know where she was at. But I, I, I'm the mother. I feel like no, you shouldn't be. You should ask this me. She said I did ask this me where she was at. She said she was okay. And to me, it wasn't enough. So who said she was okay? My sister said it was okay, but to me, it wasn't okay. When so your sister said it was okay, or your daughter was okay? My sister said my daughter told her she was okay. But she wasn't at your aunt's house. Yes. Do you understand that that in of itself is not okay? It is not okay at all. So I went out the same day and I started looking for her. I shot up her phone and she couldn't reach out to me. I shot up her phone because I feel like she didn't deserve the phone. And she said she was trying to reach out to me and her phone shut up. Yes. Your Honor, it looks like a, I, by the way, I'm standing in for Ms. Craven, yes. so I'm not completely familiar with the case, but from what I can see, um, it looks like um, this position is set July 16th. Um, I'm not quite sure what this position um, is going to be. I'm assuming some type of probation at home, and I'm guessing it's going to be with mother. Uh, Your Honor, what I would propose is that the court entertain putting her on electronic monitor with home detention to give the court an idea of how successful she's going to be when she finally does um, go on probation on July 16th. Um, this would be a, good, a, a great opportunity to test the waters. Um, in addition, I'd like to, the court to keep in mind that a lot of these problems, it sounds like, happen under the care of the, um, the aunt, not necessarily the mother. Um, and it sounds like the mother and the fiance are prepared today to ensure that Destiny has the proper supervision. And if you don't mind, Your Honor, if I could have listed a, just a, um, a few questions from the mother in terms of her availability to supervise. Yeah, sure. Um, um, and Naya, what is your name? Lisa Logan, same oh. last name as Destiny. All right. And do you work? No, I have a artistic daughter. She don't speak. I can hear you, ma'am. I, I have an artistic daughter. She don't speak. She don't do language, and I took care of her. Okay, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. If you could just keep the question or the answers down to yes or no, that would be great. Okay. Yes. Um, so you are at home full time. Yes. Will you be able to provide full time supervision for your daughter while she's at home? Yes. Are you asking the court to release your daughter today? Yes. If she is released on electronic monitor and home detention, will you assure that she stays home and she is properly supervised all day long? Yes. Are there any others inside the home? Nobody. Okay. So it's just, it will be you, your daughter, and your yes. other daughter. Yes. What about and your fiance? Yes. Okay. Does your fiance work? Yes. Okay. And what is his, what are his hours? What, what? what are his hours at work? Um, from eight o'clock to five. Okay. And so if you need to run any errands, um, will you be able to do it while your fiance is at home so that destiny can remain supervised at all times? Yes. Okay. No further questions. All right. And Ms. Destiny did bring 
certificates to show that she has uh, done very well in detention. She's been on level one for a number of um, How long has it been? Almost 30 days, Your Honor. May 29th or something. Yes, Your Honor. So. Okay, Destiny, I'm going to go into release on electron module. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, what could end up happening out of this is you just give me more information on why you don't need probation. All right? So it's your chance to see what you do with it. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank Ascari. over on Oakland Boulevard that was a victim who said he was assaulted by his friend, Ascari. We talked to him, he said it started about one in the morning, got off work, went home, and that you were making fun of him for being friends with a gay male in their apartment. They were, you, at, you were at his apartment. So you were telling him to come outside. that he has stolen money from your mom and we went outside to speak with you you and two other black males and one suspect is Malik we know Malik right he's one of our oh he's here okay so you and Malik started striking him outside the apartment he was trying to defend himself went back in and the three of you allegedly went into the apartment and continued to hit him while he's on the floor and Christian stood in the doorway as lookout him, called the police. There was a camera and it showed you rushing into the apartment and saw Christian stand by. So you're looking at burglary of habitation. And this happened while you were on probation for tam felony tampering with evidence, unlawfully carrying a weapon, a firearm. You're positive for marijuana while you're on probation. While you've been on probation since September of 20, you've had curfew violations, suspended from homeschool. How do you get suspended from homeschool? No, it's regular school. It's regular school, okay. Oh, from his home homeschool, all right. You refused to participate in our family partnership program, unsuccessfully discharged from outpatient drug treatment. We had an administrative hearing and to address these issues, You've done 36 of your 64 community service hours. And and you're level two acceptable for playing in the cafe and sharing your snacks with a peer. Before that, you dropped from one O to one acceptable. There are no notes. All right, sorry. You clearly can't follow. Do we have a parent here? Yes. Yes. Hello, mom. Hello. Have you been able to talk to your son while he's here? I have a dad, but he calls. He calls. Have you been able to visit him? No, I came oh. on Saturday. I'm sorry. I came on Saturday. You can't have said it. Okay, did we explain to you? Did they explain about the visitation rules that we were allowing the in person visitation now? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I hope you take advantage of that. Um, it seems like Ascari really hasn't learned much while he's on probation and with this new offense. So if he's going to continue to act up and cause problems, well, I can't release him back to you because I don't want to put him in your home where he disrespects you and doesn't follow your rules and has an attitude at your home. He needs to go home and be a good son. That's all I want from him. All right, so I'm okay. going to detain your son for now. Okay. We'll revisit this in a couple weeks. Hopefully you have your visits. You can sit down. You're not getting up yet. I'm not done with you. Sorry, what you don't understand right now with your attitude, this mom, this is the same attitude he has with you, I'm assuming. 
Is that about right? Mm-hmm. Pouts, acts like a baby when he doesn't get his way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Ascari, what you have to understand is you have this new offense of burglary of habitation, but you are currently on probation already. And he is currently on the felony probation too. Is that correct? One misdemeanor, one felony. All right, so it's great. What you have to understand is as a result, if you violate your probation, you could be going to the Texas Juvenile Justice Department on an indeterminate sentence. All right, there's one person that decides whether that's going to happen or not. And that person happens to meet me. All right, and that being said, you have one person in the world that you need to impress to make sure that you don't go to TJJD. It's not your mom at this point. You need to impress me and judge. All right. And so if you're standing up and acting defiant, like you're too busy or you're too good for these court hearings, that's a quick way to tell me that there's nothing that our probation department can do for you that we need to send you to TJJD because we can't help you here. And if you're trying to tell me that we can't help you and that you don't deserve another chance, then you're doing a good job with that. So we'll have a hearing and I'll be fair at the hearing, but I need you to understand that every one of your actions is looked at under a microscope and we're all paying attention. And if you're giving me nonverbal cues about how to treat you or what your attitude is, then you're doing a very good job of communicating that to me. So we will see in two weeks of the 10 day hearing. Hopefully we'll have a better, we'll have better information about you on why it's appropriate to release you back to your mother and put you back in the community instead of removing you from the community. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Next is Malik. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Malik. So you also, you're here with Ascari on the burning habitation. However, you on probation for stealing a car. On June 19th, you went from level one outstanding, level one acceptable to from one outstanding since you were slow to enter the program. So that, that means he was slow to get out of his room, correct? Okay. On June 16th, you went from 1O to 1A for the same thing. And you also were on probation and tested positive for marijuana when you got picked up for the burglary of a habitation case. Malik, you have to understand that one of the conditions of probation is you don't associate with people that are on probation. So even being next to Ascari was a violation of her probation. Aside from the smoke and marijuana, and aside from the alleged going to house to beat somebody up. You're 14 years old. All right, do we have a parent here? Not here? Furthermore, Malik, you had restitution of $685 from your stolen car case. And we only recently got the first payment of about contact mom? She just wasn't unable to make it? Mr. Mitchell, how far did his behavior level drop? Just the 1A? Just 
Have you talked to mom about restitution lately? I talked to her about it. Special sometimes not to decide is to decide. Probably this is what I'm going to do. You're, you are level one outstanding. I'm not happy about you dropping down, but you're here on this date. All right, I'm going to release an electronic monitor. A large part has to do with the fact that your mom started these restitution payments as well. Okay. Remember, since you've previously been adjudicated for a felony, this isn't even, I don't even have to decide whether you're a danger to yourself or others or not. Simply the fact that you have a prior felony allows me to hold you. Okay. So it seems like you're turning the page, trying to do the right thing. Especially when your mom make the restitution payment, you trying to get a job. Uh, I, I want to encourage you to follow down that path. You cannot associate with any other child or adult that's on probation, what on supervision, either through our juvenile department here in Tarrant County or with adult probation. Okay, you will have an electronic monitor. It will set off an alert when you're around them. All right? Do not push me on this one, uh, because next time I just I may not detain you. I may not release you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Lita. Thank you, Mr. Willis. Good to see you. You're not going to San Antonio? No, uh, we're not in town tomorrow, but uh, uh, it's not in town. Where are you going? <coughs> I'm sorry? Mexico, we have friends who are getting married there, so. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, That's a whole lot better than CLE. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, Lita, so you are, oh, you just turned 15 this month. You're a level one outstanding, and you have been for three weeks. Lita, I think it's one of those while you're here, you just you behave, and it makes me want to release you. This is what the seventh or eighth time I've seen you. Um, over the years from another facility. All right, I'm just convinced if I let you go that you're gonna run off like you have every other time. Okay, so it just, because I don't think they'll show up for court, I think I just need to go in and detain you. Um, we're looking at another placement, Kalina, is that correct? Yes, we're right. I'm waiting on the psychological return, and then we'll end up with start to get that. Right. And the parents are not, I don't think I saw them. Oh, hello, Hi. the mask, I didn't recognize you. Okay. All right, well, thank you for being here. Um, I think if I let Lita go, she would just run away. You know, it's, she's, she's done that over and over. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to do with her. I wish she would just go home and be a little girl, but she, she doesn't want to. And there's nothing, you, it seems like you and I can do about this. So, you know, hopefully she learns Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, Lita, I just want to make sure that you understand you are free to make you're free to make your own choice. You're just not free to choose your consequence. Okay. This is the consequence of escaping a facility. All right. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Everyone, you just turned 17 this week. See you on 
the 22nd, you're brought in for EM violation. He left home at 4 o'clock in the morning, came back at 6. Dad was called. He left his job to check on you. When he got home, the door was unlocked and you were not home. So we used the police issued the warrant or executed the warrant. When he got back, brought here without incident. And you were drug tested. You were negative. Good. You're on probation for failed ID. Oh, Tucker. So this is your first, this is original detention. All right. So you were out. All right, Ms. Cruz, help me out on this one. So why was he on the uh... Uh -huh. Sure. So he was on probation for failed ID and criminal trespass. And then why is on probation? Or he's, so you he got arrested for failed ID, then in January and April, got arrested for criminal trespass and failed ID. And then while he's on probation, <clears throat> he's sneaking out of the house. So we put an EM on him. And then while, and he's positive smoking weed while he's on probation too. No, he hadn't taken probation yet. Okay. So then he's sneaking out of the house. So we put a GPS on him and he sneaks out again while he's at the GPS. All right, that makes sense. Do we know where he went for those two hours? Uh, it just says he went to police your apartment. I'm not sure where he went. We don't have any connections or no? OK. Do we have a parent here? No, sir, we do not. OK. All right, well, turn in. I mean, this is the consequence. <clears throat> we put the EM on you because you were sneaking out, and you decided that while you have the EM on, you're still going to sneak out. And so at this point, I, you've talked to Dad? Yes. And his conversation, conversation with Dad? My conversation yeah. with Dad. Um, Dad is, is, is concerned because he's at home and he's Right. Sure. I'm sure Dad works hard for his things. Tell you what I see here. I'm not really that worried about you, like going out, robbing people, shooting people. Like, there's nothing to indicate that you're really a danger. What I'm concerned about <clears throat> is the fact that you're just not responsible at 17, and your decisions could negatively affect other people, like leaving your dad's house unlocked when you leave. You just lock the door. The problem here is when you go on probation, you're telling me, you're saying, Judge Kim, give me a chance. Yes, I broke the law, but I'm not, I don't need anything big. Just if you give me a chance, I'll show you I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm going to follow your rules. I'm going to follow dad's rules. I'm not going to break the law again. I'm just going to make better decisions because um, you don't have to get really involved in my life. But yet when all this stuff comes up, the fact that when you were brought in, we had to put electronic monitor on you because you were sneaking out of the house. And with the electronic monitor, you're still sitting in the house. All you're doing is you're telling me that I need to get more involved in your life. Right? The best way you can live your life right now is to do what your dad expects you to do, and I don't get involved. But if you refuse to accept your dad's instruction, right, then you're asking me to get involved. It's really that simple. Okay? So I am okay releasing you, but I can't release you to just, I can't put a 7 year old kid out on the streets. I hope you understand that. Okay, Ms. Cruz, let's contact Dad, see when Dad can arrange to pick him up. I'm okay releasing him on the trunk monitor. Um, 
but I'm, I'm kind of giving you a pass on this one, all right? Like you understand the next time you come in for violating your EM, it's gonna be a much more uncomfortable conversation, all right? And I'm just, I'm not gonna feel bad about it. It's just one of those, it's, it's kind of you're just throwing in my face next time. And then it becomes personal, and then we don't, we're not gonna get along, okay? All right, we'll try it out, Tyrion. It's a large part because you tested clean too. You understand? Had you smoked some weed, we'd be having a different conversation, all right? Asia. Sometimes it's like these kids want to see me. <laughs> like he's done inside, they're like, you know what? I misjudged him. <clears throat> I'm gonna sneak out for a bit just so I can see him again. I think so. <laughs> they love you. All right. All right, Adrian. Never been here before. 15 years old. So yesterday, at seven o'clock, Fort Worth PD dispatched a domestic. Mom is mom here. Uh, hello, Mom. Hello. And that is sister, I guess? Yes. Okay. Your mom told the police that she told you to get up off the couch. You got enraged, swung a power strip, hitting her above the right eye, causing pain. And is that a bruise? No. no. okay. Sister came in to help, and then you hit her in the shoulder, allegedly. And then the two fought, and Asia ultimately slammed your sister's head into the wall, causing pain and swelling above the eye. Okay. Well, a big part of this, Mom, is on. Let's let's figure out where we are. What's going on with Asia? Is there anything that's really changed about her recently? Could you say that, please? Just a. She just her attitude. That's the only thing. That's the big issue. That's her first time ever doing anything like this. So it was surprising to me. Okay. And she do take medicine, so like I don't know if she took it that day, okay, or whatnot. Uh, so I can't say that she did or she did, but I can tell a difference when she don't take it. She get angry, like she goes from zero to hundred real quick. When she doesn't take the medication, yes. okay. And so when's the last time she this is mental health medication? When the last time she this had is, it? This mental health medication. Yes, ma'am. Okay. When's, yes, the last time she, when's the last time she saw a doctor? She had a doctor's appointment yesterday at one o'clock. Oh. And she missed it. No, no she, she had it. We did had a virtual appointment. Okay. Did the doctor change the prescription at all? They didn't change nothing. Okay. But when she's taking the medication, generally she's okay? Yes, yeah, she's okay. All right. So, I mean, I, I'm just going to ask you, did you take your medication yesterday? No? Okay. So you understand in the past, you didn't take your medication. <clears throat> it probably didn't end up so bad, but now that you're 15, and you're making different types of decisions, do you understand how not taking your medication can put you in a really bad situation? Okay. So mom, do you feel like if she takes her medication, it's safe to bring her back home? Yes, sir. Okay, so your sister's here. Is she the victim of this offense as well? Okay. All right, so how do you feel about this? Do you feel like if Asia's taking her medication that you're reasonably safe at home? Yes. Are you the younger sister or older sister? Younger. Younger, okay. All right. So now here's the thing. So do you just give her the medication, just let her take it, or is she responsible I, to take it on her own? I've tried to trust her to take it on her own, but okay. now I see that I'm, I'm at to make sure she take it. Okay. Because she at the age, I think that she she knows she's supposed to take she it. Should. She should. At 15, you should be able to take your medication. So Asia, this is not really based on your mom saying this, but this is my decision, is I am okay to release you back home, but your mom has to watch you take your medication. You understand? This is not her call. Mom cannot say that I trust you, just do it on your own. Like, mom, I'm part of the condition of her release is that you actually witness her or somebody witnesses her take her medication. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll try that in 30 days if there's no problem and, and you feel like, mom, that we can, you know, let Asia take it on her own. Just let Miss Paxton know and I can change the rules, change the conditions. Yes, sir. But for now, Asia, for the next 30 days, your mom has to witness you taking the medication. Does that make sense? Okay. Is that going to be a problem? 
So my decision right now, I have a duty that I have to protect your mom and your sister, okay? And since you are the alleged aggressor in this one, the law allows me to keep you here since you cannot go home, okay? Now, I am saying, because your mom and your sister are kind of going to bat for you, and they're also telling me that you need to take your medication, I'm willing to let you go home if you take your medication. Is that a deal that we have? Is that fair? Am I being unreasonable? Okay, so let's go ahead and try it out. Now you understand, if you come back here again for the same thing, you're kind of gonna, you're gonna run out of places to stay at. Okay, all right. Thank you, Asia. Mom, she doesn't run away or sneak out or anything. Like oh no, no. Okay, good. Yes, sir. All right, it's Maya. I just turned 16 this month. You've never been here before. Do you have a parent here? No, Your Honor. I understand. Okay. All right. So I guess Monday about 7.30, your audience of the PD was dispatched for domestic. Your mom wants to look at something on your phone and you became angry. So allegedly you kicked your mom in the stomach, but did not cause pain. I was yelling at her. So mom's boyfriend intervened and you pushed in, you pushed back. Allegedly, you went to the kitchen, threw a knife at him, but he didn't feel threatened. So then, allegedly, you walk outside, and boyfriend followed. I'm assuming mom's boyfriend, not hers, correct? Yes. Okay. And you pushed him, causing the fall. You both began wrestling. He claimed that there was no pain. Although no party was expressed any pain, the officer saw boyfriend had scratched his arm, and the pinky nail had torn. So, you're arrested for family violence. Back in May, on to PD referred you. The SRO in Houston was dispatched about a student, Tamaya, who ran from campus, refused to return. While responding, the officer was dispatched to contact EMS about another student who was pepper sprayed in the face. She said she was best friends with you, and you and her with auditorium. When she touched you on the shoulder, then you allegedly pepper sprayed her in the face and mouth. She felt pain, but not seek medical attention. Officer couldn't be with you since he left campus. And so you were going to be charged with assault. Be loved here, but the fact that there's kind of a pattern here, I feel like there's something else going on that I just don't know what it is. Okay, I don't know if you got, I guess, I don't know if your situation at home is toxic and creating this environment that you can't, you don't have the skills to cope with. I don't know if there's a mental health issue. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, but I'm cautious because there's an allegation of a knife being thrown away. Okay, and that is one. That's one thing that it escalated. It's clear that your mom or boyfriend does not want you to be here. I understand that, but as the judge, then I sometimes I just have to step in and get involved and interfere. Okay, the fact that this is coupled with a incident that happened over at the school, all right, this gives me concern because this is a pattern of behavior of you being aggressive or assaulted with other people. Okay, that somehow in your mind you feel like 
causing harm to other people is acceptable. All right. So um, at this point, I'm detaining you. Ms. Smith, I'll let you talk. I just, um, at this point, I'm going to detain you unless I feel like I can, I can have more information that lets me become more comfortable with releasing you. All right. Now, Ms. Smith, maybe you have something that makes me more comfortable. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, Okay. Um, in addition, I would speak to the alleged victim of this case. Um, to start off with, the alleged victim in this case is not the one left to move forward. Um, however, I am going to support that doesn't address the court's concern. Um, one thing that I want to point out, obviously, um, the in speaking with both my client, the mother, and um, the alleged victim. This report does not actually reflect what actually okay. happened. Um, and one thing, obviously, this is not the proper place to litigate your case. Sure. Um, if it does get, if it does go on through the DA, I would imagine this is the, the a, a very special case that will get set for trial. Okay. The one thing that I do want to point out, my client, um, that will emphasize, I think, my point is it mentions nothing about my client being cut, um, harmed, or hurt in any kind of way. But if you pay very close attention, I believe my real report, Your Honor, is going to be the last sentence on the first page. I've got two different reports. I'm not quite sure what you have. But the last sentence reflects that the, the officers um, basically noticed that the boyfriend had a stress on his arm and his pinky nail was bent down. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I have a, a pinky nail that's bent down, that's a sign that I've grabbed something or I've done something, right? I think the pinky nail just doesn't get bent back to the reason. Um, with that being said, obviously I'm alluding to that there might have been some violence against my my right. Um She has let me know that um, he was actually um, violated. Okay. I think the, uh, the parental uh, boundary kind of got overstepped, and that's what actually caused this commotion. I can see um, that. In regards to the mom's position, the mom is asking for her being released, Your Honor. Um, the mom has emphasized to me that she is concerned. With her daughter, and so what we did this morning was we did go ahead and explain. Um, she has been diagnosed, I believe, her mother said, with breast name or wrong, ADHD, ADHD, Your Honor. But the mother indicated that there's some there's some new things that she was concerned about. So what we went ahead and we did we we said if she gets released, and we're hoping she gets released, the very first step is to take her to medicine. Right. Okay. So let me let me interrupt. Because I see, I kind of see where you're going. If, if there's stuff that you want to add to me, that's fine. So I, to me, to me, I, I want to release you. What I want to do is be a little bit more comfortable because of this pattern of behavior. Okay, part of it's the pepper spray at the school, right? And then you're running. And part of it is um, what's allegedly happening here at the home. Okay. There's a whole lot that just makes me uncomfortable. That's the bigger issue more than anything else. So can we figure out the time that mom can come? Absolutely. And then, so I understand it's her second day, so she could miss work, and I get that. I'm just wondering if there's another day this week, like Maybe. tomorrow or Friday, that mom can be here, even if it's the afternoon or first thing morning, even if it's a separate session area. Maya, I don't want you to be here if you don't need to, okay? I, I want you to believe me. But you have to understand where I'm coming from. When I see children with a pattern of behavior of aggression, then a lot of times that just escalates to something else and somebody gets seriously hurt. What I see is a pepper spray with your best friend, which I don't get. And I'm also seeing now a knife being thrown, but they're saying that they didn't feel threatened by it, which causes me concern. Because one, either they're, they feel, did feel threatened and they're just lying for you, which they can do that, or that you thought it was appropriate to pull out a knife even as kind of a scary tactic, okay? Which the next time, because once you take that step, the next time it's easier to get a knife and throw it to make an effect. Does that make sense? So I'm just seeing this pattern that is what's giving me discomfort. And I just want to be able to talk to your mom or boyfriend and they can tell me and I can ask them some questions, but I do want you out of here if that makes sense, okay? So I'm not releasing you yet, but I want to release you. I just have to be comfortable that nobody gets hurt. And this is part of me, kind of the consequence of both what happened at school and then what happened two days ago. You know, do you understand where I'm coming from? Okay, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to hold you here for no reason. I want, I want to give you the respect so you understand exactly why I'm holding you here. 
And this is straight up, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Ms. Smith, did you have anything to add that would assuage me on those factors? No, I think you're on I think it really needs to start to have to go and direct the time on so I'm going to try to I think so. And if it needs to be morning, late afternoon, whatever, just let me know we'll accommodate you. Okay. And I want to do that to get you out of here. Right. Okay. I, I mean that for, for real. Okay. All right. Thank you. That will conclude the text document for today. Thank you, everyone. Yes. By the way, I think I finally have the right word in DM me after coffee. Oh, okay. But, like, after like a bit ago, like, wait, I never got that. Like, I can't close this case. So, apparently, some stuff just showed up today. So, anyway, I'll upload it. I will leave it there for a period of time for you to view if you want good. to. And yeah. then, yeah, I will get it right on top of that. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Would you like a half drink bottle of water? <laughs>